Hello and welcome to the 5th episode of Teach Me Mortal Kombat 11 series. Today's episode is all about footsies. So let's first go through what we are going to learn today. We'll start things off by looking at the motivation of why one should learn about footsies. Then we'll try to find the pillars of footsies by looking at three real match example scenarios. We'll close things off by extending what we have learned to come up with a thought provoking observation about footsies. So let's start. In the last episode, we mentioned a concept known as footsies uh, that involved neutral game at mid-range spacing and defined it to be literally a mini game you play with your opponent trying to hit each other's foot while at the same time avoiding your own foot from getting hit by the other player. This concept stems from the discussion we had in the previous video on the importance of neutral game at mid-range spacing. So be sure to check it out as well as it will help you better understand the concept of footsies. Now, hitting the other person while avoiding their attack is something very core to fighting games. In fact, it is such a basic and fundamental thing that you are probably already doing it unintentionally even if you don't know anything about footsies. So what is the motivation to learn about something so fundamental you are already doing? The reason is that a deeper understanding of the footsies concept will provide you with the fundamental building blocks and rules to effectively hit the opponent and avoid their attacks with a much higher probability. Once you learn about it, you will start looking at the fight from a different, much clearer angle and will be able to dissect any encounter into its constituents. And once you start looking at the fight in that way and start to incorporate footsies in your own game plan, your performance will increase by leaps and bounds. Now, as simple as the concept may sound at first, playing footsies has numerous layers to it involving a complex thought process that is going on in the minds of both players and that is what we will call the mind game. So we will try to make things easier and learning more fun by considering a few simple real life scenarios uh, which you can relate to and that are present in every single match. For demonstration we will be using Scorpion as our player character and Sub-Zero as the opponent player. So let's start by considering the first situation. How would you stop an opponent who is advancing on you to attack? You would stop him by using a far reaching attack on him before he can attack you as soon as he enters your attack range. So in essence, this is staying at space where you are and defend it by controlling the space that is in front of you. In other words, it is zoning at mid-range because you are not allowing your opponent to enter your zone. Isn't it exactly what typically zoners do? They don't want you to come close to them. Sub-Zero wanted to attack you but you not only avoided his attack but also scored a hit on him. So mid-range zoning is what we will consider the first pillar of playing footsies. Now let's put a layer of mind game on top of this scenario. What if your opponent knew that you would use a far reaching normal to stop him from attacking you? Then what is one possible way for your opponent to counter you? He can bait you into thinking that he is going to advance on you but back off as soon as he reaches your attack's range. Now by that time you would have thrown the attack on the screen in reaction to seeing him approaching you but your attack gets whiffed and as soon as your opponent sees that he attacks you while you are still recovering. So this is moving out of or withdrawing the space where your opponent thinks you are and then controlling the space you just withdrew with your own attack. We thought that Sub-Zero would occupy this particular space. But we were deceived as Sub-Zero had already left that space by the time we did our attack. Sub-Zero saw that and punished us for making the wrong guess. In fighting game terms, 
this is called whiff punishing because your opponent attacks you as you whiff a move. Whiff punishing is the second pillar and the heart of footsies. Now please do note that Sub-Zero in this scenario as well not only avoided our attack but also managed to hit us instead. Let's add another layer to this mind game and come up with the final pillar of footsies. What if you knew that your opponent was just pretending and baiting you into attacking him by going in and out of your attack's range? Then what is a possible way for you to counter his plan? What you can do is that instead of staying at your current position and trying to attack him from there, which would obviously whiff, you would instead move towards him while he is still waiting for you to whiff your attack, you close the gap and once you have the correct spacing to do the attack, you then hit him. In this way, you have effectively countered and defeated his plan to whiff punish you. This is known as moving into or taking the space your opponent has withdrawn and controlling that space by putting out a move there. Sub-Zero was waiting for us to whiff a move, but as we thought one step ahead, we managed to connect the move instead of whiffing it by advancing forward. In fighting game terms, this is simply rush down because you have approached your opponent with proper spacing before initiating the attack. So mid-range rush down is the final pillar of footsie. Again note that in this scenario as well, you can see that we not only managed to keep ourselves safe from Sub-Zero's whiff punish, but also landed an attack on him. Now that we have found the pillars on which the whole idea of footsies rests, I would add one last layer to our discussion to illustrate a very important observation. Let's continue the mind game and consider what if your opponent was just pretending that he didn't know that you knew about his plan. So what happens now is that as you are advancing on him to ensure proper spacing for the attack, he initiates an attack of his own before you could reach him. This takes us again to the first scenario but with the roles switched. So in essence the whole footsies concept is a mind game loop and if we put all three pillars together we will come up with a footsies loop or triangle where one pillar counters the next and so on. Now if this loop were to continue indefinitely then both of you would be doing the so called footsies dance on the screen moving back and forth back and forth, waiting for the other guy to make a mistake on which to capitalize and do a high damaging combo for example. Let's summarize what we have learned in this video. The concept of footsies is based on two things, movement and space control. Movement is primarily used to take or withdraw the space you are occupying. On top of that, there are various layers of mind games of attack and defense and just like chess, you need to be thinking many moves ahead at any point in time to win at footsies. Lastly, but most importantly, if we put together all the concepts what we have learned till this episode, we can see that winning the footsies game is a sure way for either player to change the state of the game from neutral to him having an advantage over the other player. In the next video, we will strengthen our concepts even further by analyzing a real match played by professional players and dissect it with respect to what we have learned so far. If you like my content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications when I upload the next video. Also be sure to leave your feedback, suggestions and questions in the comment section. Till next time, it's Mini Ninja signing out. Thank you.